Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Come in, come in. Well, I had my musical bonnet on last night. Went looking for the lost chord. And I found it. Some joker was wearing it as a necklace. I had to cut him loose from a ceiling beam to get the cord. <laughs> oh, fun. Later on, we sang sentimental songs. Everyone was so touched in the head. One gay blade got so hysterical he fell on himself, ran himself through. There he lay, dead, but no blood. The zombie. <laughs> the party broke up when everybody broke down. Ah, yes. A little life of an evening can be deadly. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, The Devil's Workshop, was written by John Robert and stars Mason Adams in the role of Tony with Joan Banks as Tina. Tonight's story was specially devised to get you used to the coming winter chill. Just try to shrug it off, I dare you. Our hero is Tony Murillo, creator of The Devil's Workshop. A talented young man with a genius for evil. The Devil's Workshop. I created it and I live in it. Living with me is every murderer who ever amounted to anything. Hatchet men, pathological killers, Bloody Mary, and the Devil himself. We live in it, all of us, with one difference only. I'm flesh and blood, and they're wax. My hands made them. It's a good business. I can't keep up with the cash orders pouring in from wax museums all over the world. It's a good business, except that sometimes it gets in the way of your love life a little. Your girl wonders about you sometimes. Tony, how did you ever fix on such a strange occupation? Maybe because I'm strange myself. And maybe because it's my name is Murillo. Murillo? See that figure standing alongside the refrigeration room? The chubby little bald fellow with the face of an angel? Mm hmm. He'd shot nine men before a sheriff's posse got him. He was Cesar Murillo. My old man. And sometimes your girl Tina forgets the blood around her is make believe, and the lunatic faces of homicidal killers are only wax. <laughs> <laughs> Did Bloody Mary just swing at you with her axe? No. No, no, not Mary. It was the devil. I could swear he moved just now. Tony, look. What do you want me to see? The devil grinning and moving his lips. Look, Tony, I'm not crazy. Oh, no, you're not crazy. He's always grinning and moving his lips. Uh, always? And moving around the room, always restless. Today he's behind this killer, tomorrow that killer. Or watching Hickman the butcher. And always grinning and moving his lips like he was egging them on. Tony! Do you know what you're saying? Uh, uh, forget it. <laughs> Things happen to you in my kind of workshop. You turn in for the night on an iron army cut and the shop comes alive. You're wax and they're flesh and blood. And all of them having a time of it for themselves. With the devil dividing his time the best he can among all of them. You wake up, and there he is behind someone else for the day. Or you wake up, but he's gone. The devil's nowhere in the workshop. As if he just upped and went on the town. Tina! Yes, Tony? What are you trying to pull? Paul, I don't understand. The devil, he's nowhere in the workshop. Tony, what are you saying? But you were here during the night and carried him off. Nobody else could have gotten in. Why should I steal your... your devil? I reported it to the police as a theft to a Sergeant Tracy. Hey, somebody stole your devil, you say? A wax devil. Is there another kind? Hey, 
You were asleep when the uh, door was locked? Yes. Any windows to the loft? Two leading to a fire escape, but they were bolted from the inside. Well, uh, if the door and windows were locked, uh, how do you figure the robbery was worked? I don't know. Could he have uh, walked out? Uh, the devil, I mean. Uh, I don't know. I returned to the workshop by way of the docks. Just a door or two from the workshop, a man stopped me. A man in black. Black as if he was wearing the night around him. He wore a hood. Just his eyes showed like small batteries of light. Make an outcry and I'll kill you. You're going to rob me? No. Commission you. Commission me? You turn him, Marillo? Yes. Where's your workshop? Two doors down. I came to you because of your genius with your hands. You want a figure? No. Just a face. A face for me. You see, I have no face. I mean, no adequate one. In the workshop, the eyes gleaming from holes in a hood turned on me. Sit down while I unmask. Sit down? It may be a shock. I'm not pretty. Every day I see things here not pretty to see. Very well, then. Look! Where's your face? All that there is, you see. You're, you're just a skull, like death. I can breathe. But through holes. I can eat and talk. But your mouth is just a slit, no lips, and no flesh... Like your face was eaten away. It was eaten away. It was how? You really want to know? I can't stand it. It was a bandit somewhere in desert country. The bandit had a sense of the uh, grotesque. He didn't like my face, he said. You want a face for me? Yes. But a wax face, what good would you? You're not... You're only to comply... Not to judge. You will rebuild my face. You will model a nose, lips, and a chin. But out of wax, it's crazy. Better a surgeon. Surgery's done miracles. I want a wax face. Tempered as firmly and durably as those dummies. But handsomer. I want to be handsome. In fact, as handsome as you. As me? Yes. Make my face in your likeness. Well, why do you keep staring? You. You could be the wax devil. You have a lively imagination. Have I? And a perverse habit of staring. Now what's running through your imagination? What I just said. You could be the wax devil. I could be wax. The wax devil disappeared this morning. All right, touch me and satisfy yourself. And let's get this over with. So you can work on my face. Feel my hand. It's flesh. And blood, too, believe me. Or would you prefer experimenting with a pin? No. You still think I'm your missing devil? You... You couldn't be. But... I got to work. I posed myself in the warm mirror and rebuilt his face in wax. A fine, straight nose and a strong chin like mine. I mixed colors into the wax to get a reddish glow to the cheeks. I made the face durable as much as my skill could. And when it was modeled into the warm mass, I kept him in the refrigerator room as long as I dared. You, now, have a face. Let me see it. Where's your mirror? Over there. Ah. A good job, Tony. I... I can breathe. And I can talk. You planned your work intelligently. Look at me. I could be you in wax. Yes, you could be me. How long can the face last? Indefinitely, if you keep the cold temperatures... Then I'll live here with you. Live here? I must. What? Where better than here, I'll have your hands at my disposal. And your refrigerator room. 
Besides, I want to show my gratitude by rewarding you. Rewarding me? How? By making you rich. Enormously rich. Money, jewels, treasures. Where's all that coming from? From everywhere in the world. From banks and from merchants and from misers. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. Not only do I not have an actual face, I haven't the conscience either. He was going to steal for me, he said. But he began by stealing from me. Tina. I'd had a date with her, but she hadn't shown up. I'd waited half the night, but she never came. The next day when she dropped into the workshop, I lambed into her. What changed your mind? Changed my mind? We had a date last night. I waited for you. You didn't show up. I didn't show... Tony, you're insane. We kept our date. We what? We kept our date. And we had fun for the first time in weeks. We had fun. I... I even fell in love with you. All over again. What did we do? You don't remember? Tony, what's the matter with you? Never mind. What did we do? Well, it... There, there was an open-air movie and, and a drive into the country. We sang and joked and... and parked in Lover's Lane. <laughs> Tony, what is it? What's come over you? You were out last night, all right, Tina. But not with me. You were out joyriding with the devil. After that first date, the devil and Tina kept palling together night after night. Dates every night. And Tina smiling like she just discovered herself, like she was having the time of her life. Even when Tina found out he was a ringer for me, she preferred him. I couldn't talk her out of it. I couldn't beat her out of it. Tony! I'll knock some sense into you if I have to kill you. Quit dating that, that freak. You, you've no right to order He's me. He's a devil. Only in your crazy head. He's warm and real and even tender. His face is a dollar's worth of wax light, a match to it, it'll melt away. He told me how that happened. The terrible way he was mutilated. I cried, Tony. I wasn't repelled. I, I just cried for him. You went for a gag. He invented that horror story about his face. And if he did invent it. He did invent it. It doesn't make any difference to you. Nothing makes any difference to me. Not even if he's the devil. Not even then. All these days you've been telling me he's the devil. A, a thing with a false face and no conscience. And while you've been telling me all that, do you know what I keep thinking, Tony? What I keep whispering to myself. How do you keep thinking? How exciting. How exciting to be in league and in love with the devil. Are you surprised, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> as if she was having a fit and moving away from me deeper into the workshop, losing herself in a crowd of wax figures, hatchet men and crazy killers. I followed her with my eyes as far as I could and suddenly I saw her as someone else. She wasn't Tina any longer, but Mary. Bloody Mary. Tina! Tina, come back! Tina, don't go! She was down the stairs, gone, running from me. I went back into the workshop. I had to get hold of myself. I was seeing things. You seem a little unsettled, Tony. You? Yes, me. You handled Tina very clumsily. What were you spying? I couldn't help overhearing you. I was there in your refrigerator room. You've got Tina in a crazy spell. She adores me. And quite naturally. What do you mean, quite naturally? It's not just the tortured resemblance you and I now bear to each other that draws Tina to me. It's far more than that. I'm more her kind. I don't understand you. She told you she found me exciting. Couldn't you guess why? It was just talk to drive me crazy. To get even for the pushing around I give her. No, it was more than that. You see, you and I are superficially the same. And quite matched mentally. Neither of us can lay too, uh, too much claim to sanity. But you have one attribute that I don't possess. And it's the lack of that uh, attribute in me that attracts Tina. What haven't you got that attracts Tina? A conscience. 
You think I'm joking? I don't think you know, Tina. On the contrary, you don't know her. You see her as simple and lovely and good. In fact, you want her like that. Consequently, you repress her where I free her. Now I know you're the devil. Scheming to remake Tina in your image. Am I? Did you see her before? Did you see the curious transfiguration she underwent? When she dared free herself and laugh? Really laugh? Yes. She seemed to change right under my eyes. She seemed to change into what? An older face, wild and crazy and gloating. Like... Like... Bloody Mary waving her axe. Bloody Mary back there with the wax figures. Like Bloody Mary. That night I crept along after them, the devil and Tina, as an observer, along the harbor front where ghosts of ships float into blackness to a small park in the fancy east end where tired men sit on benches and dream into the river. I watched them work as a team, Tina and the devil smoothly, every move coordinated as if they were both powered by one instinct. The sitter got up to go, and then he screamed suddenly and struggled. No! The devil had his arms in a vice as Tina swung the axe. No! I'd been wrong about Tina. The devil was right. Her face looking down on a victim was the face of a maddened killer. The face of Bloody Mary. The devil had promised to reward me by making me rich. He hadn't forgotten. For you, Tony. A small down payment on my gratitude for this face. A man's wedding band. It's not much, but the wretch had little worth stealing. Only a watch, a few paltry dollars, and this ring. The money goes to Tina. I will keep the watch. I don't want the ring. But you must take it. It brings the three of us closer and ensures two of us against notions you may entertain about the police. <laughs> it also suggests another way that you will eventually become a problem to me. How will I become a problem? You took the wedding band reluctantly just now. But soon you'll become bolder, greedier. Soon you'll want more. Soon you'll demand Tina, too. You'll try to recapture her from me. I want no part of Tina. I do. Tina. Yes? I never want to lose you to Tony. I don't think you ever will. Will you marry me then right away? You don't know. Whatever you've done but not that, you... You can't marry the devil. But I can, Tony, I can. And I will. Tina did. And I watched. And for you, Tina, take this... This man to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. Please place the ring on her finger. Ring? I forgot about the ring. Tony. Yes? The wedding band you acquired earlier. May I borrow it for the bride? Yes. I have it here in my pocket. It was a beautiful ceremony. You don't think so, Tony? It was a nightmare. You're bad company for honeymooners. Drop us in the nearest motor court and then be on your way. Be on my way? Yes. We'll manage without you. Nicely. I dropped them at a motor court. But I didn't go on my way much. I pulled the car to a side, shut the lights, and I tried to think. I tried to corner my brain and force one idea to it. One idea. The devil could have Tina, but he couldn't wear my face. I thought about that and the idea grew. His power over me was my face. I was mixed up about everything crazy as all get out, but this one idea was the clearest thing I understood. The devil couldn't wear my face any longer. Not if I wanted to hold on to the only thing I had. A conscience. I crept into their cabin very noiselessly. Tina had dropped off in a chair. He was on a bed, breathing heavily. I lit a torch I'd made of paper and twigs. 
With my knee in the pit of his stomach and one hand like a steel vice on his throat, I held the blazing torch to his face. He awakened but lay helpless, making whimpering sounds. I watched first his chin melt and then his cheeks, and then little hot rivers of wax run down him on him and on me. Tina! Tony! Stop! Stop! Look, Tina, look behind his Stop. face. Look at your brain go. Let's go of me. You'll burn too. You'll burn too, Tony. Tina, fire! Tina, let's go. Stop. Your brain will be burned to a crisp. I escaped. I rode in the dirt outside to stop the flames on my clothes. Tina didn't escape. When she saw the flames were too much, that it was too late to save him, she flung herself across him on his funeral pyre. The last thing in my ears as the cabin began to fall was... was her scream. I'm back in the devil's workshop now, winding everything up, making plans to junk everything here for keeps. Sergeant Tracy is here with me, trying to make sense out of what he checked of my story. I had a whole group of specialists go through the rubble of that cabin that burned to the ground. I started the fire. I destroyed his face and Tina Ford with me. I uh, no, He told us that already. There uh, weren't two corpses in the rubble, Tony. Just a lot of wax. Wax over everything. The devil? Was undoubtedly that wax figure you reported missing. But, Tina... We're checking over your workshop just now. I find another figure in your inventory missing. Another figure? Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary is missing. See for yourself. I didn't know exactly what you did the other night in acting out your hallucination, but there's no doubt in my mind that the two people who were burned in that fire was a wax devil and a Bloody Mary. A man was axed to death and robbed in the park on the East End, you said. That murder never took place, Tony. I'm as crazy as that. Well, uh, let's just say you took that weird business you're in a little seriously. Now, well, that uh, just about explains everything, more or less. Or does it? Or does it? There's uh, one big question mark we're trying to slough off at the department because if we don't, we'll all start looking under our beds at night. One big question, Sergeant. We went through the rubble of that cabin with a fine comb. All we found, as I said, was wax and uh, this. This? A wedding band. A man's wedding band. <laughs> <laughs> I hear there's a sign outside a certain workshop that reads, For sale, owner gone off permanently. You can buy in cheap, anybody. A small down payment, a wax dollar, say, with your mind as security for the balance of your sanity. <laughs> So the blazing lover's triangle finally boiled down to just Tony. Imagine all that wax and no candle wick. <laughs> As a close friend of mine remarked to his keeper, make a rental service out of your face and you're liable to get it in the neck. <laughs>
Inner Sanctum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for service men and women overseas. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.